Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome back. We're going to do a little Wing Chun today. Uh, we're going to start off by going through some general exercises. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about sticking energy today. Uh, so if you're doing Chi Sao, this is going to be useful for you in the future. Just individual practices that we can do uh, to kind of build up on our ability to feel that sticking. Now, the first exercise we're going to do is just going to be a build Ji. All right, we're going to shoot from underneath our elbow and out with our fingers pointing forward. Your arm is going to have a slightly complex angle to it. And then your upper arm coming back up right to your shoulder and going forward here. The goal on this one is and you can go all the way from your elbow up and through or come even all the way back into the pit of the arm and go up and through. Our goal here is to feel that line all the way through the whole way. Just do a few reps of each exercise. Working on sticking through the motion, and as I said, you can come all the way back to that armpit if you want, or you can go more practically just to that elbow. We'll do about 50 more here. And five more. Okay, shake it out a bit. All right. And we're going to keep that same principle of being uh, tactilely sensing what we're doing as we move to do a little bit of this palm press, which comes out of your second form. All right, when you rotate, typically you're going to see wiping, wiping palming, palming, all right? So that arm is gliding up from that elbow straight forward right until that other hand comes to that elbow and is able to pass back on top. As soon as you round that elbow, you're gonna come back forward with that palm strike. You want your palm to be coming straight out and you don't really wanna be making it as a wiping action too much. So you want it to go straight ahead. I'm just letting my hand relax when it gets back to the elbow so it can easily come around. You don't want to keep your hand locked in that uh, finger up position too much. You're actually pressing with the heel of the palm and that's what's bringing the fingertips up. All right, so we're relaxed as we're coming back and shooting through. These first two exercises should be done with a lot of freedom in terms of mobility. Nice, smooth transitions. Do about 50 more, and like I said in a previous video, I'm terrible at counting. So if we do a few more than that, that's all right. And about five more. Good, and shake it out a bit, okay? So we worked on that underside of the arm, all right? We've worked on the 
inside wiping on that arm. Right? We can also work on that outer edge by working a lap sow exercise. So when we do our lap sow, you're going to come to a bong sow shape. Let that hand travel across the top line, grabbing, making that fist, and throwing that punch straight through. All right. We can transition right over to another bong sow, clear that line, and come through. You can do this alternating sides like this, or you can just do it right on one side the whole time and switch to the other side. Let's do the single side version. To start off, we'll go one, two, three. One, two, three. Follow that hand down, that elbow down. Ideally, fingertips coming to face upward as you come through. And just 10 more. Okay, we change sides here, working on that other hand clearing. Elbow right in front of the shoulder, wrist in front of the center, approximately, and then that finger in that up position as you shave forward, grab, and throw that punch. About 10 more. Last one. Okay, check out those arms a bit. Okay. So we can do these sorts of exercises where we're wiping and we're clearing our arms. Um, you can do this with your Tai Sao as well. All right. And lots of different ways to work on these sorts of exercises. Um, you know, you can do all kinds of other connected sorts of exercises, like spiraling exercises and things like this. All right, working on that closed circle with yourself in sort of a chi sao format. Um, and so there's a lot of ways to play with this self connectivity, right? And that will help kind of inform your body a little bit through uh, movement. You know, obviously, once you incorporate another person in there, there's a little gap to jump in terms of uh, utilizing that ability to be sticky uh, when someone else is trying to not be sticky. All right, so with that said, we're going to use a prop, all right, and so if you don't have one of these rings, all right, if you don't have this for a tan ring, uh, you can find one online fairly easily, all right. Um, but this is a good tool to, when you're working on your own, you don't have someone to work with, to kind of build some of that uh, linking into your practice, okay? Um, so I'm going to go through just a couple of general exercises with this. Um, you know, we can do the chi sao with this, and we can do some other things with this. Um, but the first one, probably just really simple exercise to warm up, is just working on turning that ring and throwing that punch straight, okay? Working on sort of that range of where your hand wants to finish in that motion, all right? Now, it's not completely true to how we might necessarily want to punch because that ring forces you to arc a little bit, all right? But it'll give you some general ideas and give you a feeling of connectivity, all right? Wing Chun tends to be a lot more linear than round, so when you introduce the ring into the process, you just have to understand that when you start to really apply it, you're going to bring a little bit of that roundness 
out of your motion and be a little bit more straight on with some of your movements. Okay. I'm just letting it rotate. And if you don't have a ring, all right, you can just throw those punches as so. Okay. All right, just basic exercise. Right, that's a good way to start warming up with the ring, just turning to throw those punches. Okay. All right. Now we're going to go into a lop sow exercise. What we're going to do, I'm going to get a little closer to the camera for this one. What you're going to do is you're going to take that backhand. You're going to wrap the thumb onto the inside here and then come up. And that's that lop action. That hand in the back, you can see I'm releasing. And now I'm just going to cup it with those four fingers right there to catch it. Okay. And then I will turn the ring to throw that punch from that left arm, right? I tuck the thumb, lop, and catch, and punch. All right? I let that finger pass over, catching with the thumb, grabbing with the hand. I'll show you the other angle on that there. All right? I'm catching with this thumb on this side here, grabbing, rolling, and catching, all right? Ideally, when I punch, I want my punch to finish straight, okay? So, or sorry, this punch to finish straight here, okay? So we're gonna catch with that thumb, right, because this is my lap, and that's my punch, okay? Here, roll, and punch. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right, so one is passing, two is lopping, and three is punching, okay? I'm gonna do this a few times. and then I'm gonna switch to the other side, all right? So I'm already in that position here now. I'm gonna use that opposite thumb, come over and through and catch and punch, catch and punch. We already did the empty hand version of this. If you want to do that empty hand version, all right, using or utilizing the bong sao to tr allow that hand to track down as you do that exercise. Okay. Once again, that empty hand version. I'm coming with my bong sao, clearing and punching clearing and punching, all right? And I can work through a pivot on that one as well, all right? Important one when you're doing it empty hand is you're still making contact with yourself, right? Once again, this is to train that stickiness, all right? Okay, I'm gonna talk a little bit about chi sao, all right? The ring is a useful tool for doing this, right? When you do chi sao uh, empty hand, of course, you can do it just in space, all right? It's very boring looking when you do it in space. Some people put a little bit more of a roll in it, and we're gonna talk about that as we do the ring here, okay? So, a couple of different options, all right? Easiest option to sort of see and visualize is in that center of the ring here, all right? I'm gonna make a connection against my forearms, all right? And Depending on what variant or version of rolling hands or sticking hands you want to do, you're, you're going to probably want to do this in a couple of different ways, all right? So probably the most common way you're going to see is palm up on the bottom and bong sao on the top, right? This allows you to follow the ring and roll as the ring rolls, okay? You want to be thinking about going forward with your motion, 
as you maintain that sticking, all right? If the ring rolls up to your wrist, no problem, that's totally fine, all right? If you can keep it towards the forearm, it'll give you a little bit more of a tight or deeper feeling sort of roll, okay? So anywhere from that forearm up to the wrist, okay? So that's one version of it. Right, this is a very symmetrical, these exercises are very symmetrical. It actually helps you work a little bit on your opposing side roll as well. Um, the way that sometimes I'll do this exercise is a more stationary sort of variant, less of a big roll, okay, with those arms, uh, more of a roll of sort of this up and down feel, right? So now I'm palm up on the top of that ring and in my bong sao at the bottom. So now I'm just rolling around the ring itself. The ring is not really moving very much at all. Up and down, okay? If I wanna be a little bit more true, sort of to the fashion of chi sao, my second hand is gonna actually be stationary in that motion, all right? And you're gonna see me roll down and roll up slightly through that motion, right? Lots of different ways to play with it, right? But main thing is that you're working on that idea or that concept of sticking to your ring, okay? All right. So last thing uh, let's talk about on this exercise is a little bit more of a tricky way of practicing, all right? Um, and, you know, Sifu actually talked today about uh, utilizing the circumference of that circle in controlling your space in your practice, all right? So this kind of goes back to that a little bit. We talk about the connectivity of your elbow, all right? Your elbow, especially in your Wing Chun practice, doesn't really move very much at all. So something you can play with a little bit is holding that ring between the elbows, sort of cradling it in that space, all right? And when you move, right, say I'm gonna do a Fuk Sao, all right, my elbows are gonna stay in, right? If I wanna do a Gan Sao, right, at a punch, my elbows are gonna stay in place, right? So I can use this as a way to help me kind of feel out the range at which I should be comfortable with my elbows being. Now, I rather have my elbows on the outside personally than on the inside. The reason being that if I'm working with it on the inside, there's too much of a tendency to want to pull away or pull apart here. So now when I put that ring down, my elbows are going to want to start floating outward, right? Ideally, I want to be able to maintain or retain my space, all right? And if I, with the shape of the ring, if I press too hard inwardly with that motion, if I'm right in an ideal spot on the ring, right? Especially if I'm trying to go out and in, right? Sometimes the ring will slip or pop off, all right? Um, kind of depends on how good your sticking is, I guess, right? But it's easy, especially if you get more towards the top of that ring for you to kind of lose that ring falling out, all right? You wanna just gently cradle it in that space as you move, so you still have mobility through your movements, right? You do many different types of exercises using this kind of motion, catching with the inside of the elbow, okay? Uh, so many different ways to explore and play with the ring. Uh, it's a very versatile tool for you to practice. Last little reminder here, when you are using the ring, understand where the circles are kind of benefiting you and where you might have to adjust them slightly when you go into real or true application, which is to say, if I want to bisect something, I don't want to take a big loop around with that motion, all right? I want to keep it short, all right? I want to work on using the ring to teach me about uh, spiraling, to teach me about retention of space, uh, some of these sorts of things, and to teach me, once again, about that sticking quality, okay? All right, that's going to be it for us today, right? Once again, if you're practicing on your own these days, right, the ring can be a really good ally for you 
They're pretty inexpensive, all right? I go check those out a little bit, all right? Okay, that'll be it for us today, okay? Thank you, everybody.